Hi, my name's Mike Reed from Red Mac Pop-Up Studio. I'm preparing several films that are intended to assist architecture students with their knowledge of construction. And in this film, I'm going to be talking about the placement of insulation within the wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw several sections through an external wall with the same amount of material in each one. So the top one is a masonry cavity wall, brickwork on the outside, insulation in the cavity and block work in a leaf with plaster. This would have roughly 100 millimeters of masonry, 150 cavity of insulation, 100 on the inside. This one is going to have the masonry all in one place as the outer portion of the wall and the same amount of insulation has moved in this case to the inner side of that masonry. This is swapping those two things around where the insulation moves to the outside of 200 millimeters of masonry. Now I'm going to take a snapshot of a weather condition where the outside is zero degrees and the inside is 20 degrees. So a typical cold day in the UK in winter. Exactly the same temperatures in each wall condition and I'm going to draw a thermal gradient through the wall. So the gradient is shallow across masonry and steep across insulation. In each case, steep across insulation, shallow across mason masonry, steep across the insulation. Now, I'm also going to draw a dew point gradient and for this I'm assuming that neither the inside nor the outside has got condensation visible in the air which means if on the inside this is a kitchen or a bathroom no one's had a shower or boiled a kettle and on the outside there's no fog. Block work, mineral fibre and brickwork all have fairly similar resistances to the passage of vapour which means unlike the temperature gradient which is a zigzag line there's a straight line roughly joining the dew point temperatures when the dew point temperature is breached by the actual temperature condensation occurs in this piece of wall, in the cavity wall, condensation occurs in the outer portion of the insulation and the inner portion of the masonry external leaf. Moving the insulation to the inside makes pretty much the whole of the wall big chunk of the insulation, big chunk of the masonry, vulnerable to condensation. Moving the insulation to the outside makes the temperature gradient push away from the dew point gradient and no condensation risk occurs. With this option, insulation on the inside this is a form of construction that we do use 
and what we do to combat the condensation is put a vapour barrier on the inside of the insulation. So exactly the same construction apart from a vapour barrier in there. So the implications on the temperature gradient are zero. The temperature gradient is exactly the same shape. But the dew point gradient drops right off when it hits the vapour barrier and drops below. So if we were to draw a table to analyse this construction, insulation, condensation, thermal mass, The insulation level is good in all four cases. Condensation is okay in this one. It's bad in this one. It's great in this one. It's okay in this one. The reason I say it's okay in this one is because this is where you put an electrical box. So here's a switch to turn your lights on and straight away there's a penetration of the vapour barrier and the vapour can get in. This one has an okay thermal mass, there's some masonry on the inside of the insulation, there's no masonry on the inside of the insulation, so this one's no good for thermal mass, this one's great for thermal mass, and this one's got no thermal mass, and you can see that the insulation on the outside of the wall is a good solution. The other thing of note is that if there's going to be a vapour barrier it's on the inside of the insulation. So from that diagram here's some rules of thumb. Here's some wall construction outside, inside We want the layers of the construction to force the temperature gradient in this direction and for the layers of construction to force the dew point temperature in this direction away from each other. The way you get the insulation to form that shape in the temperature gradient is to have little insulation on the inside and increasing insulation as you move to the outside. Similarly to get that form for the dew point temperature, the vapour resistance of the wall is high on the inside and low on the outside. But another way of thinking about that is breathability of the wall is low on the inside and that breathability increases as you move to the outside. Thank you for watching.